What is up, guys? It's DJ with Here for the Speed. I'm joined by... What's up, Jake? This is Jeffo. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Matthew. And we have a very special guest on our show today. We have Stephanie Moyer, ARCA driver. What is up, Stephanie? How you doing? I'm good. Oh, yeah. So so you, uh, you're, you race in ARCA. I do. So I have to know because like we 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 talk all the time about obviously racing and uh, different things and ARCA always comes up as kind of like the 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 series that everyone likes to rag on. Like, does that bother you at all that you that you're in that group at all? It gets to some point that it does because it's hard to find sponsors that want to sponsor a bottom feeder division in NASCAR. So it's it's really tough, especially when it comes to like subscription stuff with like flow racing and stuff like mm-hmm. that. A lot of yeah. sponsors drive away from that because it's not on live TV and then people have to pay and there, there's a lot that comes with it. So yes. I don't know if you've looked at our TikToks, but obviously there was some big news that happened this weekend at the track. Well, apparently, no. A lot of people on social media did not like our take on the incident, and one of the comments that came up was, "It's an Arca move." Does that upset you when someone says something like that? No, not really, because sometimes <laughs> it is agreeable <laughs> from like my perspective. So sometimes, sometimes I have to agree with it, but no, it doesn't bother me one bit. Like, what is your take on what happened last night from your point of view? I thought it was crazy, to be honest with you, but I mean, I hate to say it, but you got to do what you got to do to kind of lock in and get that win. But it, it gets annoying because you're not only driving aggressively, but you're tearing up other people's hard work. That's you know, true. It just it gets to a point to where it's unacceptable, but at the same time, it's also acceptable because there's no rule on it. So, all right, let's go into to more stuff. So, like, what do you got going on this this year? Like, what are what are your how's the year going? What uh, what you got so far? It took a turn. Um, so, I'm getting married in like less than a month. And oh, so congrats. Congrats. That's congrats! That's amazing. Awesome. Thank you. So, I wanted it to take the year to kind of focus on that because there's it's a lot. It's a lot of work. So. Um, I wanted to take the time for that, but I'm also trying to build to move up from the ARCA series. Um, Like I said, with uh, the prior statement, like it is tough trying to get sponsorships. And especially for me with not having the last name, it's like really freaking hard. Yeah. And everyone wants to sponsor in a higher series. So I am trying to look forward, but at the same time, I'm also trying to just learn more, not only just from a driver's perspective, but a mechanical perspective perspective to kind of make it a lot more easier for when I'm back in the car and I can tell them what I need for any kind of adjustment. It just works so much better when you have a driver that knows what they need and how they need to get it. Right, right. I was supposed to do an Xfinity debut, but I might save it now that I'm I'm working with Rev. It's kind of hard to get our schedules to coexist on the weekends we're not racing. So. Right, sure. You're just going to go straight to Xfinity is what you're trying to do. I would prefer to go to trucks, to be honest. I love the truck series by far. They put on the best shows, and they're dirty. Like, they, <laughs> they grind, they race, they rub, they grind. Like, that's just, I don't know. I just love the truck series, man. Like, there's always something happening. I like Friday night races. I think that's awesome. The truck race is usually it threw me off this weekend having it on a Saturday. Yeah. Um, totally threw off the weekend. But Friday night races for trucks, man, that's nice. Plus you get a nice break in between. You know, they'll ha- they'll go a week or so off and it's like, man, that's a, that's a nice build week, you know. Um, no, that's awesome. So is it is it hard trying to I'm assuming it is, but obviously you're you, you know, you race with Toyota or been racing with Toyota, right? Yes. So is is it one of those things where like trying to move up into the upper series, like I'm assuming, do you have to always like be mindful of like, oh, it's got to always be a Toyota or does, is there chances where you get people talking and you hear, oh, there, there might be a position in a Ford, but I can't go there. Like I'm. Yeah. So there are drivers that are a part of the TRD program. I am not part of the TRD program. I'm actually not with any, um, any make at the moment. So I'm like free reign at this point. Gotcha. Okay. Unless you're signed under a contract with Chevy or Ford or Terry, it's just 
you can't unless you race for them. But being mm-hmm. that I'm not signed on or anything, I'm. Is there a? Do you find in that there's a lot of like opportunities if you just if you have the funding? Is the funding the biggest the funding the biggest problem, or is it like a uh, making sure there's actually an opening to begin with? The funding is like a huge thing because the way NASCAR is going, a lot of people don't agree with how they're trying to move things to electric, like how that big mm-hmm. thing came with that. Yeah. Not a lot of people like. They like the old school stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, And with with the marketing side, it's more B2B than just getting your logo on a car. There's so much more for that. So it's more like I scratch your back, you scratch my back. What can you do for me? You know, if I'm going to invest in you as a racer, it's just there's so much that comes with it. And the way the marketing side is changing is insane. Like at this point, I wish I went for business because without having a marketing Mm-hmm. it's extremely hard. you know just a lot of places don't want to listen to your pitch because they're just not interested and with the following too the following is the biggest thing in order to get the funding unless you have you know so many thousand followers that's basically what the companies are looking at right now too yeah, yeah. i mean i like for example the Daytona 500, like, or, or even the Xfinity trucks. I mean, you just don't see 10, 15 cars show up and, and miss the show anymore because you can't afford to. There's, you know, the business practice or the business uh, practices just don't allow it anymore. If you don't mind, I've got a, a couple of questions. Or is it a couple? Yeah, it's cut. Look at least a few questions from a friend of ours. Uh, we, we joke because we have this guy that. Uh, honestly, the way we became friends was he was arguing with Jake on Twitter, which apparently uh, <laughs> that's how we gain friends. That's kind of how we get followers <laughs> and fans. Like, we just argue with them, and they're like, oh, I think you were right. Yeah, this was back when <laughs> I mean, was we, just, we just brought him from Twitter to, yeah. the, to the group chat. Yeah, so, so now it's just uh, on a personal level. One of now. the things he asked, he's uh, he said, as a racer, what's your favorite race to watch? Truck racing at Martinsville. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I that's have a- to say it. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that it's the truck race on Martinsville, but also your typical short track, local short track racing is always good. And then let me tell you, like, I grew up, I was eight years at a short track, my local short track before I got into Arca. And now that I'm in Arca, I sort of miss it a lot because it's just not everyone's there. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's fun to kind of get away with a lot be a lot more aggressive that's allowable yeah can, can you give us a little more background on your on your short track racing days like your local local short track level that yeah many people so don't really i know started about. off in uh go-karts i started dirt i raced for two years and um my brother passed away he was a uh short track racer as well at our local track in pennsylvania and i made a bet with my mom that if i got the championship in the go-karts I get to go up to his car and I got the championship my second year and I've been racing his car for eight years. Um, asphalt street stock for eight years. Mm-hmm. I did some um, late model races and as well as four mod starts as well. So I kind of did a little bit of everything. That's awesome. Are you, are you still located in the Pennsylvania area? No, so I relocated to Mooresville. I'm, I'm in North Oh, Mooresville. Okay. Okay. So when you run sense. when you run the short track <laughs> yeah. stuff, where where are your stomping grounds right now? If you're running running your brother's car, I uh, so I ran at a Evergreen Raceway in St. John's, maybe about 45 minutes west of Pocono. That's awesome. Ever get down uh, into Florida and area area to race? I didn't do any short track stuff with anything other than Arca. I did run Pensacola and uh, New Smyrna before. Yeah, okay. New Smyrna is fun. That's yeah. kind of like our closest one to where we're at. <laughs> Our closest yeah. short track is two hours away. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. Hey, man, that's there's, what it uh, is. Like, there's not much. It's either that or Pensacola, which is <laughs> another question from our uh, our friend that Jake argued with. What is your dream track to compete or race at? Pocono, easy. <laughs> She's already raced there. <laughs> <laughs> Pocono, easy. Um, that is a good one. I always wanted to try to do some road course stuff. It. You know, I never really like the road course stuff, but on iRacing, I'm pretty good at walking and so I'd love to do that. Oh, but... we got to get you and Jake on the iRacing. <laughs> That's my favorite road course, too. I love walking and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, 
That's one of my best tracks, but I would have to say Talladega. Talladega is my biggest one. Every time I host sessions, it's always that Dega. <laughs> <laughs> if you could pick a different style, what would you of racing? What would you pick? Sprint cars. Mm. I love That's my sprint wild. race. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. You like living on the edge. I don't think I, do. I can make I went one to single lap. Um, so I interned for a ARCA team when I was uh, out school. And we went to Volusia because Daytona was right around the corner. So we were there for a while. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Volusia and I saw one of the sprint cars flip and ride the fence in one and two. And it was the gnarliest thing I've ever seen. You know, we were, so, how long like, ago was that? We may have been there too. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. so. I, I guess I have a question now. So you mentioned eye racing. How, um, how much eye racing do you do? So I usually only go on right before a race. So I'll start practicing about two weeks before mm -hmm. and I'll go ahead and post a session, a private session. And then I'll, sometimes I send it on on Twitter if anyone wants to join, but a lot of people just don't take it seriously and they just wreck you. They come in and wreck you and then leave. Like, so <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah, sounds that, like I racing. No, that, was, that was Jake. <laughs> Well, yeah. That's fine, man. But we, yeah, so I do it like two weeks before race, and then if I get bored, I'll switch it up and then go back to it because sometimes you just have to stop and go to something <laughs> else and then come back to it. That's fair. Yeah. Do you ever do like the official races and stuff like that, or you mainly use it just for kind of a practice session? I uh, I'll do it every now and again. Um, I like to do charity races, so if oh, anyone yeah, very cool. needs like donations and stuff, I'll do a, one of those charity races, but. Um, usually I just do my own session. I was just going to ask, I know a couple of years ago when you were racing with Fast Track that you placed fourth in the whole year of 2022. I was just kind of curious now that you're taking some time off, um, how confident are you that you're going to be able to carry that same momentum into maybe next year when you're going back? So for me, I am, I get adjusted very quickly. So like after my first maybe practice session of the year i'm pretty much acclimated at that point um i get super comfortable and i can learn the tracks really easy it's just i think more going to be tough for me if i do move up to different equipment versus with the arc i mean the trucks are similar but mm -hmm. you also have steel body and not composite so right. it's not as well it's more it's not as saving because once you get shredded that's that's basically it you can't yeah. bond of it like you can't an arthur car so sure it's just more so getting acclimated to a different chassis yeah that makes sense and then also like one thing we haven't talked about is uh, any plate racing experience at any of those kinds of tracks how do you feel about that going into that if that was going to be your path i don't really see a big issue for me being like pocono I just wanted to go faster at that point. <laughs> Once you get that front stretch, you're like, okay, like let's go. So play race, and I'm not too worried about. I'm more so confident on it. I feel like the bigger tracks are where I'm better at. Um, Pocono had a safer my finishes the last two or three years, so I feel a lot more confident on bigger tracks versus the little tracks because you have more time to figure out what you did wrong before you get into the next corner to readjust yourself. What was your favorite NASCAR team growing up? Or if uh, more specifically, maybe a favorite driver? Uh, I was a Jamie McMurray fan growing <laughs> up. Okay. All right. Okay. It's okay. It turned into Truex after that. You know, okay. I was gonna say honestly, good choice. I was expecting you to say something much worse, so don't don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Denny Hamlin, we're, we're done. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you feel like your driving style aligns with the best? My driving I haven't really looked at with comparison, but my attitude, on the other hand, is a little different story. <laughs> but, that um, works too. Yeah. <laughs> So everyone says that my attitude would probably be like Tony Stewart attitude because oh, I yeah. just don't like you have so many trolls <laughs> that I just want to argue with <laughs> so badly. Like we know after this you weekend. Have no idea. So <laughs> yeah. and everyone says that I'm gonna be the younger version of Tony Stewart and I hate I don't wanna do that. I really don't wanna do that. I just wanna keep my peace and do what I have to do. But man, it's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> So I remember, um, I want to say it was two years ago, um, we were obviously watching on TV, it was Pocono race, and there was a close call, and you made it on TV for this <laughs> close call. 
It was the Reese's close call of the race. And it was real close. <laughs> Do you remember that? I know it was a few years ago. Uh, what was your reaction? Kind of what, what was going through your head when you see this car backing up? And oh you're coming out of a turn. It's funny because the guys at the rev shop just talked about this maybe like four weeks ago. It was insane. Mm -hmm. um, it never lives down, which is the funniest thing. So I had just a little tick of his front end. Like I did touch him, but not enough to like for anyone to see it it was insane That's fair. I, there wasn't yeah there wasn't um, a good angle on it i remember coming out of the turn my spotter didn't even say anything like that's how quick it happened he was oh, wow. just <laughs> off and i was like what is happening and then i saw sean start moving and i'm like oh no this is gonna <laughs> like kill my day like <laughs> that's how quick we're going i knew it was gonna be done if i would have hit him the car would have been destroyed yeah you you um, barely but... squeaked up <laughs> <by there. laughs> yeah. i remember puckering my butt cheeks and i'm like well we're gonna do this i i lift it just a little bit but just enough to keep my momentum going so i can clear him mm -hmm. as quick as i can um but it was insane like i didn't know how hard i turned until they did the different angle and showed the tire smoke none of that was brake smoke it was all tire smoke from how how hard i turned that car <laughs> from keeping it from hitting him dang it's a wild <laughs> it was a wild it was insane save. that was probably the most gnarliest thing i have ever been through yeah, I probably would not have reacted that fast. <laughs> yeah, I remember well, this was good. <laughs> I remember watching that, but I pulled it up earlier yeah. to rewatch it, and I'm like, ooh. Every time I pull it up and rewatch it, I'm like, man, that was like way closer than I remember it, it was being a close <laughs> every single time. Yeah, say the like, same thing. It's crazy because they have like two angles. Like the one angle, it doesn't look like much, and then when you do look at the second angle, you're like, holy ooh. cow! <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite like atmosphere? that you've been to around the country regarding racing? Like what, like what track have you been to? That's just like the people are different here. It's going to be weird because it's in Ohio, but Toledo was probably the biggest crowd that I've ever seen. I've ran out of so many hero cards. I brought a stack like that thick and they were gone. And by the end of the autograph session, That's like awesome. their Dang. crowd is the biggest turnout, which is insane because it's such a small track. Okay. But um, I've never met so many nice people. Usually it's a, hey, can I get a hero card? Yeah, sure. I'll sign it whatnot. But they were like interactive as all hell. And That's it was cool. the greatest awesome. thing I've ever seen because I think more tracks should have a lot more fans that want to get involved mm -hmm. and not a lot of tracks have them. A perfect example is that we love going to Daytona during speed weeks when it was separated by two weeks and the, the ARCA cars were in the Daytona garage, they opened it up and you could walk around and all, like oh, as long so as you cool. had the fan zone, you could walk around and meet every single driver. Yeah. It's, you just can't anymore. It's like a bummer. Like the, I, I agree Like tracks need to do more things like that and, and make it get, and and not just make the drivers more accessible. I mean, at, at the same time, you, you, we hear about, um, you know, Denny Hamlin talks about it. Um, Door Robert Clears talked about it. That you know, these drivers are so busy with sponsorship obligations. There's got to be some kind of method to reimburse them for their time to do that too. Like it's got to be a communicative and a, and a sharing partnership across the board. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I couldn't agree more. That's like spot on too not you don't see that a lot anymore like when i was younger and i was going to pocono it was a lot more interactive and now that like i'm going and there it's closed off so it's yeah. just like you don't have that much of a gain when you go you get an autograph side in the picture but you don't actually get the time to speak with the driver and yeah pick their brain a little bit we've been talking all about you racing and you on the track What's what are you like off the track? Like what do you what do you do? Like what do you like to do when you're not there? Like do you do you just like to chill out? Like what do you, what do you do when you're not racing? So I'm a huge PC gamer. And you <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, what what kind of games are you playing? Right now I'm playing Phasmophobia. It's pretty freaking good. 
it gets boring after a while but they just released the uh, lighthouse one and it's like the coolest thing ever it's like this ghost hunting game it's 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 a little sketchy when you're playing by yourself. I'll tell you that. But you can do group <laughs> play, which is which is nice. One of, um, one of those. So it's well, I guess I haven't played it. Uh, yeah, we we'll have to check it, it out. More like Outlast, kind of like that kind of genre. Oh my gosh! Don't even get me started about Outlast. That game freaked <laughs> me out. The <laughs> first time I ever played Outlast was I had some friends over and I was like, "Hey, I got a projector," and they're like, "Let's try this game." And we tried it once. We made it into the house. And that was it. We're like, nope, nope. We threw the controller. We're like, nope, we're done. We're yeah, done. Can't, can't do, do it. it. Turn the lights on. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. That are like the forest or like Sons of the Forest. I like open world survival kind of building things. So Sons of the Forest is pretty good too. All right. Well, Stephanie, it's been great. Where can people uh, find you, follow you, support you? Where's the best place to send them? So you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, I'm under Stephanie Moyer Racing on Facebook and then Steph underscore Moyer on my social media. Sweet. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. And if you uh, reach out to her, she might actually get you in an iRacing lobby as long as you promise not to wreck her and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> or everyone else. Oh, my gosh. I have to make other people admin just so I don't have to like, <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Stephanie, it has been a blast hanging out with you. Glad we got to meet up. And, uh, hey, if you ever got some free time, let us know, and we'll definitely do this again because it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, real pleasure. For sure. Thank you. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much for hanging awesome. out with us, and we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye.